thing that you need is that over the sort of right hand side there. The only thing that uh, you as a client need is just that browser to access it. And you do access software as a service whenever you're using Facebook, whenever you're using your email. They're all just like all done through a browser uh, to it, and you get that sort of nice little front end that can access all that sort of data in the background. Uh, in terms of platform as a, as a service where you are managing building up your own application, you can develop the, uh, the software yourself locally, uh, but then deploy it out on their, on their sort of platform. Uh, with. So for example, you might develop uh, a web application in, uh, using Java Servlet and the jQuery and all these sorts of things as we're doing in the assignment. Uh, and then at runtime, you say, okay, well, let's just transfer that out to a cloud server uh, and say, well, rather than running it just on my PC, we'll run it out on that uh, remote machine. And that will cope then with, we'll, we'll see uh, later about the auto scaling, so it doesn't matter how many people start to use your app. Initially using your app, you may well just, you know, it's just you using it, uh, and it can, yeah, it can cope with one person running it. Uh, can it cope with 10, can it cope with 100, 10,000, as it sort of scales up. Uh, through to infrastructure as a service, where you manage your application, your runtime, your middleware, uh, and the operating system, you sort of manage that. You have your own sort of machine, but it's actually running out on the cloud. But you have you have full control over what that sort of hardware is. So you can commission a, a Linux uh, web server or um, a Windows server again. You can decide whether or not you want um, IIS the uh, web server built on there, or whether you want Apache, which, or, which uh, database you want on it, Oracle or MySQL, which, whichever for it. Uh, so you can be in full control of which operating system you want, uh, but then when you actually run it, you say, okay, well that's actually, the, 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 there's no physical device uh, that you've got. Other managers are managing that virtualization of it, uh, and the, the storage and the networking part. Uh, through to the other sort of side, on-premises, which is where either you know, you've just got your own machine, you're talking to one person, or here at MMU where we've got on-premises, we've got all our own networks, to it. we've got our own little data centre, we've got a whole massive team of uh, IT technicians geared up to, to sort of running that uh, for it. In terms of an analogy, you can sort of look at uh, something like pizza as a service, to, 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 to sort of compare uh, to that. Uh, the traditional on-premise one, that's where you're making that at home, everything's done at home. Uh, you've got your cooker at home, you've got your ingredients at home, uh, you've got all your, your pizza dough, your cheeses, you've got your dining table, your drinks, etc. All those just on-premise, you develop it all, you eat it all, everything's just done with it uh, on, on site. Uh, the infrastructure... Um, as a, as a service is where you, okay, you manage the actual sort of hardware, but other people are providing parts of that sort of ingredient for you. They, uh, you take away this ready-made, almost sort of ready-made pizza dough, the tomato thing, the, the sort of ready meals that you go away, you pick up, and then you just sort of go home, and then you, you sort of cook the things yourself uh, to it. Whereas the, um, the platform as a service yeah, you've got just your dining table and your, your, your drink, say, but everything else is done for you. That's like the home delivery of things. They, you know, they, they cook your pizza, they cook your, your, your full-blown meal or whatever, and you get it just delivered to your door. Uh, for it. Through to the other side, software as a service, that's going out for treat. So you don't have anything to do with it at home, you just get somebody else to do everything for you. Uh, but you know that you pay a sort of premium to eat out rather than eat at home, what well, generally you do, uh, I would sort of say for it. So it's just a sort of, just a, a bit of an analogy between sort of using that software. Uh, for it. Um, this software as a service, their, their sort of business model uh, is, to, is to put it all up on a pay for use uh, idea. There's no upfront cost typically, uh, you just uh, start using the software uh, straight off you receive latest versions automatically, so it's all transparent to it. 
Uh, each time you log on to Facebook for something, it might change its interface. That's just auto-updating its, its, its latest look and feel. They may run sort of a few parallel sessions sometime when you're using your email. They say, oh, we're just trying out a new interface. They'll click here to try it out or something like that. Um, you'll eventually have to go over to it anyway. But you, you get these latest updates transparently. You're not downloading uh, the, the next version of... Um, you know, Eclipse or something like that to say, oh, or Tom and Katie to, to keep it up to date, you're, you're downloading as, as, as needed. So there's no in-house admin or installation costs. You're not paying somebody, uh, and again, you know, sort of move out to the idea of sort of doing it on your own machine, you're not paying somebody to install it on 2,000 machines across the university. So somebody's not going around and, and rolling that sort of thing out uh, for it. And many vendors now are offering their Sort of traditional software as this service one. Certainly the office sort of based ones, uh, Adobe uh, are moving that way. Most of the big sort of organizations are moving to that sort of software as a service approach rather than you actually buying CD, DVD of the software to install or download something and, and install it. They're just saying, well, log on to this page, create an account, and we'll bill you as and when. For it. So you get billed on a uh, pay per use uh, sort of idea. Not always, you know, sometimes it's free, so I think it's great for them because once, once they sort of got you, you're, you're a sort of captive audience then uh, and it helps control their, um, their sort of software usage of that. Helps control their piracy. If you don't have a copy of it, how are you going to sort of uh, run it indefinitely if you don't actually have a physical copy of it? It's all controlled you know, through, through, through them for it. Uh, things like Netflix, well, you know, they work in a similar way. Okay, they, they may grant you so many users, you, you pay for use for it for four users at a time or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of these sort of software as a service, either sort of fairly generic ones, or they may be specific to certain areas. Uh, Salesforce.com, they were one of the uh, original big users of cloud computing with their customer relationship management software. Something that you may not really have come across yourself uh, for it, but uh, certainly any sort of large organization will ask this CRM software to manage their history with individual uh, customers, what they've done in the past, uh, what's their order history, what benefits can we offer them, what discounts can you sort of, sort of uh, give to them. Uh, then the other sort of variation on this software as a service is software plus a service where you've got your own software, but then you're linking in with... Uh, some third party web service software, this is again what we're working at in some of the labs, where you've got your local software, or indeed it might be your own sort of cloud software, mixed with some of these cloud services, integrating their, uh, their particular offerings with, with your own um, with your own provision uh, for it. So it may be that they're offering things like cloud storage. So um, Dropbox comes along uh, and says, yep, yeah, you can uh, integrate cloud storage into your application and just have your users storing their data off on the sort of cloud somewhere so that whenever your, your particular application saves data, it doesn't save it on the local account, it saves it on some cloud account. It doesn't need to even save it on, on your own sort of premises to it. Or credit card payments, paying for things where you, you, know, you, you no doubt pay for something online with a, some sort of card. Uh, and it goes off to do a credit card validation of that. Um, so you, you put your number in, something happens in the background, you get a credit card validation and it comes back yes or no for that sort of amount and then your application can proceed onwards. Um, address finding or address lookups, you put the postcode in and that sort of comes back with it. So there's a lot of web services out there offering a range of functionality and they all integrate with somebody else's software sending back their results in a well-defined standard like JSON or XML or this other sort of SOAP one. And again, that's the sort of thing that you're developing in your assignment. You're developing a simple web service that other people can use as part of their application development. So you're offering, in this case, just a simple sort of film look up, uh, but you're able to send that data back in a well-defined standard and then other people can then integrate it into their app. Uh, and in our case, we're, we're actually sort of developing a little app to show that um, thing in action. Uh, 
this platform as a service, and we'll look at these, we'll look at them all in more detail just over the next uh, couple of weeks. Platform as a service is where you're doing development, uh, whether it's development in uh, on a particular platform, in a particular language, uh, with a particular database. You have, as I say, what these things called the, the stacks. You might have been doing one of the other uh, modules where you're having this um, mean stack or something like that. Uh, then there's a lamp stack, a WAMP stack, with things that say, well, this is Linux, uh, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Uh, so you get that, that, that lamp uh, stack, as they, they sort of call it, or one with Windows, Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, to it, so they they you got a sort of particular platform to develop your uh, app, apps on. Through. They'll offer that sort of development together with other things like messaging systems that might work in the uh, in the sort of background as well. Uh, things like MQTT, um, the other messaging systems that you look at in the second part of the of the sort of course. So what it enables you to do is to concentrate on application development. How much time have we spent in labs? Going over at the start of every lab, a waste of about half an hour. While you swap over Java versions, you say, "Oh, mine's running Apache version this, and it's running um, my Eclipse version this, and I can't get them running together." And it took us ages to actually get it sort of running smoothly. It's a lot easier now. Now you've done it sort of a few times, but if you can get rid of all that sort of idea and just concentrate on application development.